the scripture lesson this morning is found in the book of James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. Again, that's the book of James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 11, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. Patience in Suffering. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. The word of God for the people of God. We will now have another musical selection from our maestro Shane McKeever, followed by this morning's message, The Challenge of Waiting by Reverend Davis. Amen.
wonder how many of y'all are grateful this morning. We think about what's going on in this day and time. Yet here we are. And it's only by God's grace and his mercy. This COVID thing is for real, y'all. COVID-19. I said, didn't nobody ask me about putting something on my cell phone? But it's on that bad boy, COVID-19. But I got to cut off right now. But that's a way that they're going to track us. And then I'm thinking about, you know, how can I just get them off my back? I can't. Because I live with this thing. I said, I just leave it at home. You know, and, and something's going to happen. That's right. So I'm going to need it. So I'm saying, wow, they, they have it. Shane, thank you so much for that selection. Because it, it reminds us, you know, that we should be grateful. If you're not grateful, you should be grateful. You know, and then I can understand, you know, how... You know, a lot of us could be feeling really, really, really down uh, as it relates to this new reality that we are living into. But those numbers of those deaths, that stuff is for real. It is for real. And then I know a lot of you, I know a lot of your stories, I know the things that you're dealing with in your life and stuff like that. We still have a need to be grateful. Amen. The older I get, the more I learn about just how ugly, okay, how ugly and how tough and how hard this thing called life really is. And if it wasn't for a relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit, I don't know about y'all, but you know, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be in Jackson. I think I just, they'll have me on death row. Because you see, some of this stuff is just ridiculous. But it has always been going on this way. And so to have a relationship with Almighty God where you can live above those situations, it's something to be grateful for. Amen. And so we want to remind everybody about uh, the BMCR Bibles. If you are interested in the BMCR Bible, you ought to see Reverend Hilda Harris, okay? It's, it's a unique Bible to have, brothers and sisters. A unique Bible to have. How many of you have had the King James Bible where they have all the black figures and uh, got, got us black folk in it, okay? This Bible is similar to something like that for this day and time. Amen? And then I got a note here, a red Ford. We have a red Ford with a license plate number of 7329KS. Your light's on with a handicap plate. K5, okay. All right? Light, take care of it. Okay, real good. Real good. Well, you heard the reading of that passage of scripture from the book of James. And so we come to you this morning, yes, with the message titled, The Challenge of Waiting. But the book of James offers encouragement to those who are going through tough times. Uh, he encourages us to be patient under trials and tribulations and to trust, okay, to trust in the promises of God. We've got to do that. We've got to trust in the promises of God. So today I want to share with you, yes, the challenge of waiting. Pray with me, please. Almighty God, it's once again that we stand before your great people of Scott Memorial United Methodist Church family, visitors, and friends. And we stand, Almighty God, to illuminate your word. We are living in some challenging times. It's nothing new to you. So we want to be able to trust in you. You've bought us a mighty long way. And we know that you haven't bought us this far to leave us. So open up minds, open up hearts, so that as your word go out, it does not return void and we pray that somebody may be able to grab hold of something from this word that they could apply to their lives to be closer 
to you. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the question I can hear some of y'all saying, no, 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 I, I don't like waiting. I, I saw a, a, a credit card commercial where they wanted to add some interest rates to someone and everybody was going, no, no, no. Yes, I know you don't like to wait. But it is true that patience is a fruit of the Spirit. But nobody actually likes to wait. But whether you believe it or not, <laughs> every day we are forced to wait. Sometimes it's for things that we need and sometimes it's for things that we just want. We wait in lines at the grocery store for getting food we need or maybe or we have it delivered, but we still have to wait. Huh? When uh, driving our automobiles, uh, we wait at traffic lights. It's for our good. Turning on your laptop or your desktop computers requires a little waiting. No matter how powerful it is, you're still going to have to wait at least a couple of seconds. And now... Almost everything online, we wait for it to be delivered. Huh? So a phrase that we used to use in the military, I remember my basic training days, everything we did, we ran to it. So our drill sergeant would get us all together and get us in, in formation, and then he would have us to do a left face, and then he would say, jogging mode, and then we go run into the mess hall to get our food. But guess what? We got in line and we had to wait. And so we came up with a phrase that says, every time you look around, they having us to hurry up. And when we hurry up and get there, oh, somebody know what I'm talking about. We got to wait. Mm -hmm. So when you add up all of the waiting over a lifespan of 70 years, the average person will spend more than three years of their lives waiting for something. Think about that. Hmm? The real problem isn't the waiting. It's what happens in our hearts while we wait. All right? For too many of us, waiting creates a downward spiral of impatience, frustration, selfishness, and anger in our hearts. While waiting in line, we find flaws with the person in front of us. How many of y'all do that? Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Or you find something complaining or saying something about it. You got to wait until this long waiting in this long line. You got to do something to make it worthwhile, huh? You got to get yourself entertained in some way, huh? Hmm? All right? And if this is how we respond to other people, what happens in our hearts when God make us wait? Great expectations with a constant enduring sense that God is for us, that he loves us deeply and will at any moment move in power on our behalf. Somebody think they're sitting up in here this morning by their own stead, by their own capability, by their, their own whatever, but it was by the grace and the mercy of Almighty God. I don't know about you, but when I go to sleep at night, sometimes I tell Leela, good night, I'm going to deal with this other world. She said, what you talking about another world? I'm going to lay down, and I got to go into the spiritual world now. Because when I'm laying down and I'm into myself and my conscious being myself, there's a battle going on in there. And I have to wrestle through that thing all night long. Some of y'all can just go to bed and lay down and go to sleep. And the next thing you know, you can open your eyes up and seven hours done passed. But with the kid, it's two and a half hours. Two and a half hours wrestling with things. This person, that situation, this, that, that, this, that. How do you lead in times like this? How do you care for people in times like this? What about yourself? 
When the last time you took a vacation, how come you are not doing something for yourself? That wrestling all night long. All night long. A heavy load. So we all deal with something like that in one way or another. So the challenge of waiting How should we respond when we find ourselves in God's waiting room? Hmm? I read somewhere that said, waiting from God is not laziness. Waiting for God is not going to sleep. Waiting for God is not the abandonment of effort. Waiting for God means that first, activity under command. Second, Readiness for a new command that may come. And thirdly, the ability to not do something until the command is given. Brothers and sisters, those are challenges before us as we wait in this day and time as a new reality emerges. A new reality is emerging right in our midst, or whether you know it or not. All right? I'm listening to, what was it, Good Morning America this morning before leaving the house and one of the scientists was saying that things are not going to go back to the way that they used to be. We are living into a new normal. Everybody and everything is retooling social distancing. We are living an experiment. <laughs> we are living in a real live laboratory as we learn new things day by day as it relates to this coronavirus. Okay? But we got to wait. The challenge of waiting while this is going on. So James encourages us to be patient in our waiting and our faith will be made sight. The wondering and waiting will be worth it all. He talks about a farmer who waits for the harvest. The farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it. Like the farmer, we should look ahead with hope. Because, see, this ain't nothing new to God. And he has brought his people through a many, a many things. So just go back and study what happened with the Israelites when Moses delivered them up and out of Egypt. And look at how God intervened on their behalf in a lot of situations. He did it then, and he can do it now. But we've got to wait. Amen? We have got to wait. And that farmer, he sowed those seeds, plant them, and then he waits patiently for the harvest. Likewise, with activity under command, we await the time when the new reality emerges and some sense of normalcy will settle in. Now, what is activity under command? I'm glad you asked. I submit to you that activity under command are the things that we do while we are waiting. We are in the midst of a pandemic as it relates to the coronavirus, COVID-19, and there are things that we can do to remain safe and well while we wait for getting a handle on this novel virus. Activity under command calls for us to look to God and his word in all our activities. It calls for us to adhere to the advice that we receive from God's gifted experts and put them into action. Not none of that conspiracy stuff. Not none of that stuff that my papa and my mama used to believe in when they was doing some of their medicinal cures and stuff of that nature. All right? And maybe some of them things might work just as effectively as some of the stuff they call themselves putting together in these laboratories. Who knows? But time is going to tell. So we're in a waiting, a waiting situation. There are people 
of practical things, or there are things that are practical for us to consider when we think about waiting and what we can learn. One of the reasons it's so difficult to be patient is that it means that we are not in charge of the situation. We don't control the process and, and the time and all the outcome. So waiting slash patience, it demands that we trust in the Lord and, and, and don't try to force the situation. The Russians trying to force the situation. Or, or we have a vaccine. Wait a minute, but you know, history has proven that these type of processes and these type of things have to happen in order for a vaccine to be effective. And then come to find out the flu vaccine that we take every year on, it's only 40% effective. Okay? And so here the Russians talking about they have a vaccine already. What have you done? Or how many people have died? Since you are, you know, a dictatorship and you can do to people what you want to do to them. Scared of that. Scared of that. Amen? But God is in control, brothers and sisters. Okay? I don't know about you. Once again, we've got to be in the attitude of waiting as we need to do what we do, what we need to do and realize that God is in control, okay? The challenge of waiting is to be ready for a new command. Hmm? It's to be ready for a new command that may come. A new command that may come, okay? James reminds us that we are not the first in the world who have had to deal with unprecedented times. We are called to be steadfast, in other words, we are called to be dutifully firm and unwavering in our faith, and in doing so, God will not shame us. We must have the patience of Job. And then what else do I mean about waiting for that new command? What I mean is that we are dealing with a novel virus, we know nothing about it but what we have learned thus far. Tomorrow we might learn something new. And that something new that we might learn, it might be something that we are going to have to start doing in order to stay safe and well. Uh, uh, some of the last information that's coming out about this, this, this coronavirus is how it impacts the heart. Okay? The after effects of having it. All right? I read one study where that you get blood clots. At one time, they was putting them on respirators. Now they have come to the understanding that just to place them on their stomach is a more effective way than putting people on respirators when they have to have something like that. Our whole life has been that way. We come up on something that puts a new command or a new something on us that we must do in order to move to the next level. So that's the second part about the challenge of waiting, okay? I submit to you that there is a God purpose behind what we are experiencing in this day and time, okay? All right? And through the life of Job, who lost his wealth, his children, his health, even his wife told him to curse God and die. But he persevered and he trusted in the Lord. We should be able to see how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Because in the end, God proved himself faithful to Job and rewarded him for his un wavering commitment. One of the other challenges of waiting is to have that unwavering commitment because stuff comes at you from the left and from the right, from the top and from the bottom, trying to pull you off track. Satan is good at what Satan does. Always trying to pull you, going back to the 1960s, trying to pull you off your square. You need to stay on your square. Stay on that narrow path, and God will see you through. This is why it's so essential to remain a proper perspective when it comes to patiently waiting on God. You see, his ways 
are higher than our ways. His thoughts, huh? They are greater than our thoughts, and we need to be able to see our waiting and endurance from a heavenly perspective as we position ourselves to be ready for a new command as we learn more and more about our novel current predicament. Lastly, the challenge to waiting is the ability to do nothing until the command is given. All right? Now, that's a hard one. That is a hard one. We must trust in God's promises and the work that's being done on our behalf by those who God is working through. Sometimes it's tempting for us to bargain with God. Or we say things like, Lord, if you just get me out of this mess, I, I, I praise you forever. All right? All right? Okay? Oh, I know I've done that quite a few times myself. I might as well admit it. But, well, let me tell you about the Chinese bamboo tree. It's one of the most remarkable plants on earth. Once the seed is planted by the garden, he will see nothing but a shoot growing out of a bud for the first five years. That tiny shoot, however, it must have daily food and water. And during all the time the gardener is caring for the plant, that shoot will grow no more than an inch. But at the end of five years, the Chinese bamboo tree will perform an incredible feat. That thing will grow an amazing 90 feet tall in only 90 days. Now, when did the tree actually grow, you may ask? During the first five years or during the last 90 days? Well, the answer is in the unseen part of the tree. The underground root system. Huh? During the first five years, the fibrous root structure spreads deep and wide in the earth, preparing to support the incredible height the tree will eventually reach when nature gives the command. It does nothing until it receives the command. And when it receives the command, it grows like wildfire. And its root is deep, it's deep in the earth. That root is what we should be about getting deep into the word of God during this divine pause that we are in. So that when we do come back to some sense of normalcy, we can be like that tree planted by the water. I shall not. I shall not be moved. The challenge of waiting involves activity under command, readiness for any new command that may come, and the ability to do nothing until the command is given while growing deep roots in faith of God. Those are the challenges before us as we wait in this day and time, and as a new reality emerges, now is the time, more than ever before, to grow deep and wide in our relationship with God, through Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, while we wait. Doing that will enable us to be ready for the new norm. Because it's coming. Do you want to be ready? So in conclusion, no one likes to wait. But we wait in traffic, in grocery stores, and at the doctor's office. From a spiritual perspective, waiting is a process of becoming what God wants us to be. Hmm? What God does in us while we wait is as important as what it is we are waiting for. Waiting, biblical waiting. It's not passive, passive waiting. Hmm? Around for something to happen that will allow us to escape our troubles. Waiting does not mean doing nothing. It's not a fatalistic resignation 
It's not a way to evade unpleasant reality. Those who wait are those who work because they know their work is not in vain. The farmer can wait all summer for his harvest because he has done his work of sowing the seed and watering the plants. Those who wait on God can go about their daily lives confident that God will provide the meaning and conclusion to their lives and the harvest to their toil. Waiting is the confident, disciplined, expected, active, and sometimes painful clinging to God. And it knows that while we will reap a reward, even in unprecedented times like this, the challenge of waiting, it's a challenge. But we've got to wait. We've got to wait on the Lord. And so I don't know about you, these are some depressing times. You got a whole lot of people, they're dealing with depression. Okay, you got a whole lot of people, you know, they're in them houses, they get cabin fever. Okay, I mean, you, you have some people, they, they don't want to come, they, they won't come to church. But call that restaurant. I wonder how many was in them lines getting into the casino. But you won't come into God's house where you can really get sanitized. I'm not talking about some physical sanitation. I'm talking about a spiritual sanitation. When you can do the best you can to align your will up with the will of God, and that way all things are possible. And so, got a sister by the name of Joyce Brown. It's Dr. Joyce Brown. Joyce Brown is a person who, when I came out of the world back into God's church, she was one of those what I call gatekeepers. Because I had a jerry curl down my back, because I had spent 10 years in the military. <laughs> Leela got pregnant, so I said, it's time for me to get a real job, because I was just working at the school with my GI Bill, work assistance programs. So we got, you know, we're doing all right. But Joyce Brown was the CEO of the Urban League in Battle Creek. And as a veteran, I had access to job opportunity. So I applied for a job there, and Joyce gave me a job, and that changed my life totally. So Joyce shared this with me. Let me share this with you all. We need some levity to balance the gravity of our situation today. Please be careful, because people are going crazy from being locked down at home. I was just talking about this with the microwave and the toaster while drinking my tea. And we all agreed that things are getting bad. I didn't mention any of this to the washing machine because she puts a different spin on everything. Certainly couldn't share it with the fridge because he's been acting cold and distant. In the end, the iron straightened me out. She said the situation isn't all that pressing and all the, the, the wrinkles will soon get ironed out. The vacuum, however, was very unsympathetic, told me to just suck it up. But the fan was very optimistic and gave me hope that it will blow over soon. Oh, the toilet looked a bit flushed, but didn't say anything when I asked this opinion. But the front doorknob or the front door said I was becoming unhinged at the doorknob and it told me to get a grip. You can just guess about what the curtains told me. They told me. Pull yourself together. We will survive. We will survive. But it's the challenge of waiting that's before us. That's God's word for you today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let God's people say amen. And so I don't know about you, but I'm not tired yet. I'm not tired. I'm going to keep on running for Jesus. Got to keep on running for Jesus. And know that he hasn't bought us this far to leave us. And so, we got a little film clip 
that we want to show you since we don't have our choir here today and during this unprecedented time. I think this is one that you will enjoy.